Hi all, and welcome to the recording video for the Jonathan Dove Seek in the Naketh the Seven Stars, which is, I think, very likely one of the most important 20th century anthems. Uh, it is an example, a rare example, of minimalism um, in liturgical music. There isn't a lot. It's not the purest form of minimalism there is, but uh, it's a very good example of minimalism. Um, if you want to look that up, it's a lot of fun to look up. And uh, that's a lot of what's going on with the accompaniment. Your part is not so minimal. Uh, and of course, a lot of the chord structures, the uh, tonal aggregations that are in this are very indicative of the um, of that school. So at any rate, uh, the first page is kind of simple. It's a slow four, so I'm going to keep that count going as we do, so that I think it will help you. Uh, and I'm just going to play your parts as we go through it, except for the very little bit of an introduction that I'll add to the order part as I do. Soprano, uh, that's L sings the first page. This whole thing's going to be straight tone throughout. The page number four, and I'll go by that, that's full choir. And then one of the big effective points about this piece is this motive where it's C, 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 and a little bit before the beat on the basses. See those whole sets of basses and tenors, for instance, there. So let that move. See, you can listen to the uh, video that I sent around for the example of how to sing that. It's very effective. And that's very key. Very smooth at the bottom of page four. Smooth, straight tone. And uh, over top of the little Takata figure going on in the organ. And uh, again, the bottom of the page, the same motif comes back to seek, seek. Seek. And you want to reproduce chorally what I just did, kind of book. Seek. Seek. A little K in there. Seek. Seek. Uh, and that'll be good. Then soprano ones, you just sort of rise above everything. Probably sopranos, I just assume most of you uh, sit, record both the soprano one and soprano two will probably be most effective for this. Um, it stays soft at the bottom of the six and controlled and straight down the C came that make it the seven stars, etc. Um, top of eight, again the Seekin motif comes back. It's a slightly different different chord now at that. And then again, sopranos, you just sort of float in. Uh, really in the organ that's kind of a pinky part, uh, where your pinky is rising above the figure underneath it. Hear that? Okay. So you want that first soprano part to be nice and clear, rising above all that. Uh, then very suddenly, before the last measure on page eight, then it gets suddenly soft. And see, and then let it go. If I slow down a teeny little bit through there, um, and then the top of nine, that's basses and borrow basses. So basses and tenors. See, turn as the shadow of death, etc. Uh, I will do my best to play correctly, but sing it correctly at the bottom of nine. My, I think my finger is in the actual, I'm splicing two recordings here, and I'm not sure that I played that as accurately, but if you count it through and just sing those notes, life will be grand. Um, and then for the rest of it, I think I was pretty clear starting all of page 10. And all of page 10 is only two measures. It looks like, you know, that's a lot of page for very few measures. Uh, and then a beautiful spot on the top of 11. Play real attention to that. You want this soprano part to really sing out above all this. So it's gorgeous, but be aware of that. That beautiful playing with that E natural to F natural. It's just gorgeous. Top of 12, back to the C. But it's, it's upside down now, the C can motif. C can. Seek him. So, and that's kind of, it's kind of a spiritual, you know, seek him, it's going down, then it's up above, so it's like in all ways, it's like you're turning the notion around in your mind. Um, fine, and then the Sopranos, you rise above, like a Cantus Firmus, but not on page 12. Then all holy heck breaks loose at the bottom of 12, and I'll, I'll try to keep the counting going. Uh, be careful of these first notes here on page 13 and try to pick them off. I think I may have played that first chord may not have been right in my recording, but eventually my fingers get back in track and then it goes. So these little tone clusters, remember the tone clusters, so it's, you know, do your best. And then very big at 13 is seek stars. Ah. So keep that main, that seek him thing, 
but now you're applying it to the word stars and then the word ah. Uh. You know, so it's kind of, the text wants to stretch and grow beyond words at that point into thought, the thought beyond words, uh, which is, of course, the thing. The, the, whole, the whole point of language is to take each other's minds to a place beyond words, or at least the best point of language is that. Uh, bottom of 14, last couple of measures, I'll get to 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and and then you have this motif, and then lots of shape on this in legato. Uh, that maketh the seven, that maketh the seven, that maketh the seven, that maketh the seven. Play that motif like that and it'll be good. Uh, watch your counting on page 16. I'll count it for you about one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. But, yeah, see, it sounds harder than it is. Then what you may want to do is record everything up to page 16 and then start afresh on page 16 with the CKIM so you don't build up that tension when you're making recordings, like you have to get the whole thing through. So that might be a good spark to spot if you're going to break it in and submit it as two recordings to break it right there so that you get those fine. Then it goes back to that motif. Same thing at top of 17. So I think the hardest spot rhythmically for a bunch of you will be pages 16 and 17. That's why I'm suggesting if rhythm is a challenge for you, then start like your second half recording right on page 16 with the sequence. And you'll probably find less frustration because you may have to do those first couple of pages like, like I did like about nine times before you get it right or more. Uh, and then on page 17, that naked, the naked, the naked, just like fly right up there. That naked, the one, two, three, one, two, three, one. It's a beautiful motive that just wipes right down all the choir. And then it starts again and wipes from the sopranos all the way down to the basses. So it's like that. It's it's sort of kind of like, you know, Christ goes up on high and then he slaps the Holy Spirit back down on the creation. He steps out of the creation, ascends to heaven, and then throws the Holy Spirit on top of the whole thing. And uh, so there you go with that. And then on page 18, again, this might be another spot. If some of you have to break it into three things, this might be your third thing starts here. And that middle section from page 16 and 17 may just be one independent submission. That's okay. Uh, and then there's where it gets rhythmically complicated. If you listen to my recording video, or better yet, the recording that you hear of that, so you get it in your ear, then you go that C, M, C, M, 1, 2, M, C, M, 1, 2, 3, three. C Kim C Kim one two three one two. If it's just impossible for you to get this section, you just don't have the groove for it. Then don't sing it and start back where it goes on the sec on bench one hundred six. Uh, just skip that spot. Other people will get it and start right on the, that one two three one two three, and just start right there and just skip that one little spot. And then death of death of death of death. And then one of my favorite passages in all of Western music begins at the bottom of 19. And this is that pan-diatonicism, functional pan-diatonicism. So you have all the chord tones kind of going at once. And then the bass line is implying functionally where it goes. So it's this great expanded tonality that is one of the best parts of 20th century music. Um, and so you can look that up, pan-diatonicism. It's a thing. Uh, it starts with Stravinsky. And um, you actually have precursors in it. We sing a Bach Chacon at the end of Cantata 150, and that actually goes pan diatonic. Uh, so, anyway, so keep that up. I'll give you breathing spots in 21, 22, and 23. And then for the last page, here's what we're going to do. So, these little measures, it's 7 full 8, which is really annoying in a way. So what you get is you get one and two and one, two, three, one and two and one, two, three. That's how I'm going to count it. So the beginning of, so here's page 23. One and two and one, two, three, one and two and one, two, three, one, two, two and one, two, three, one and two and three, and one and two and one, two, three. One and two and one two three one and two and one two up one two and one two up and two and one two three one and two and up. There'll be a little bit of a fermata on the very end. I'll follow that. And for that last all men, you want the men 
to be about half as loud as the ah. So the whole thing's getting softer at the end. So it's one and two and one, two, three, and then then it's much softer. And then it ends a tiny little harmonic, and then it ends. And that is all there is to that. I made a separate recording earlier with the whole piece on it, so that'll start right now. All right, and here we go. And I'll give myself four beats, and then I'll play the introduction. Then, L, you're going to start. Here's your starting note. And uh, straight tone all the way throughout for everyone. Choir, you start at the top of four, and it's full choir all the way from the top of page number four, which is the second page number four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three, off. Pigs, pigs, pigs. One, two. Third pitch. Go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six
one, two, three, one, two, three, one. That's all there is to that. That's 